Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Winning Post powered by Akash Global Advertising in association with the Serum Institute of India. On the episode this week is the journey and the story of a man who's been in the racing industry for over four decades. A man who's extremely shy and reserved, a man of solid values and integrity. Man Singh Jadhav is our racing pro this week. My guest on the winning post today on Get to Know Your Racing Pro is Mr. Man Singh Jadhav, who's also fondly known as Manya Jadhav. He's been here for 43 years as a trainer at the RWITC. And my word, that takes a lot of patience. Welcome to the show. How did it all begin? Thank you. Well, I was an engineering student when I had an operation, a major operation, whereby I could not cycle to my college, which was about nearly 10 miles away from my house. So I just came to spend some time with my dad here, who was a trainer himself, Major K.P. Jadav. And we had a jockey, Johnny Rowe, who used to come from Ireland to ride for the Gokulasses. And he asked me casually, what are you doing? I was a kid in front of them. And I said, I'm uh, doing my engineering. So he said, after engineering, what are you going to get? So he said, I said, I'll have to search for a job. In those days, uh, engineering was not so lucrative business. So I said, I'll have to get a government job. I'll get about 1500 salary or something like that. So he said, why don't you join your father? I didn't have any interest in uh, horses. Uh, as a trainer, I do. Ha I did have interest as uh, racing, but uh, not uh, as a trainer. I didn't have any intention of becoming a trainer. Uh, so he said that uh, I'll, I'll see that I get you a good job in Ireland. And uh, you come over and learn something there, and then you can come back and join your dad. So it seemed to be good. So I started working with my dad. I worked with my dad for two years. And then uh, I went with him to Ireland for six months. I stayed there for six months with uh, Mick Connolly at Dikara and had a good experience. Uh, unfortunately, Mick Connolly had an accident and uh, he broke both his legs, which gave me a brilliant chance to work with all his horses. All the responsibility came on me and he had made me an assistant trainer there. I was not working as a lad, I was working as an assistant trainer. And uh, that gave me a lot of opportunity to learn a lot of things, going to different race courses, declaring horses, giving instructions to the uh, jockeys and everything. In fact, uh, the 1970 derby, uh, Irish derby, where Nijinsky won, I was in the paddock giving instructions to our uh, jockey with, uh, I don't know the rem remember the name, but he was some lord and ladies were there who were the owners of the horses. I was with them at the Kara race course giving instructions. Well, that, that is how I started off. The foundation was laid by my dad here. I worked with him for two years. I had worked in this uh, stable as a size. I was getting uh, 200 rupees salary and 20 rupees bakshis for a win. So I've worked hard. I've come up the hard way. And uh, I, I know everything about horses. I mean, right from the uh, grooming and everything. So there's no skipping that. Johnny Rowe became a retained jockey for Vincent O'Brien the next year. And he tried to get me a job there at Vincent O'Brien's place because he was the world's best trainer at that time. And uh, Vincent O'Brien said that, no, I'm sorry, I can't keep foreigners. I can't take a risk with foreigners. Because he was traveling most of the time and in those days, uh, Indian boys and all were not there. I was one of the only ones there, in, uh, in fact, in uh, Ireland. So he refused me a job there. Then uh, Johnny Rose said that you might as well go back and join your father. And in the meantime, there was an owner here uh, Mr. Anand, who offered me a private trainer's license. He said, you come down, I'll give you horses. So it was quite tempting and I came back. I think I made a mistake, but I still think <laughs> I had to start somewhere. So I came back in 1970. Why did you say you made a mistake? I imagine working with Vincent O'Brien, even as an assistant or a lad there, would have been much better than starting with six horses here. <laughs> because after six months, Mr. Anand left me. And went somewhere else and I was left with nothing. As far as owners are concerned, the one owner who stood by you is, of course, Mr. Vijay Shirke. And you know, you, your friendship more than anything else stands out. It's uh, everybody talks about it. How did the two of you meet, and you know, how did this uh, strong relationship really emerge? 
the day I came back from Ireland, um, I was having jet lag and I was sleeping <laughs> when my dad woke me up and he says, uh, just see who's come to meet you. And I went out and Vijay Shirke with his mother and his uh, two-be sister-in-law were there. And I thought it was Pratap Shirke, who was my classmate at one time. But I knew Shirkes because Shirkes were construction uh, people in, in the cantonment area and all the uh, bungalows in cantonment area were built by them. I knew, I knew that, you know, knew that family. So Vijay Shirke had come to buy a horse from my dad for uh, riding and um, he wanted to learn riding. So dad had promised him that he'll teach him riding and then uh, that's how the friendship started. That was in 1970. He bought, I think, a horse in 77 or 78. I bought his first horse. Uh, I was in Bangalore and uh, there was a horse called Soldier Blue which came up for sale from Mr. Ramaswamy's yard. And um, he wanted 20,000 bucks for that. And uh, Vijay Shirke was very keen to buy a horse at that time, though his father and uh, father was not, not very much for it, very, very much against it, in fact. I was one of the banned persons from coming home. Uh, so uh, he sent the money over to Bangalore through his people and um, I got the cash and I went off to Ramaswamy, Dr. Ramaswamy and he said that, no, I want a check. So we were foxed, we didn't know what to do. So how to give him a check now? So um, my daughter was just born then. So we opened a minor account in the bank and uh, uh, Vijay Shirke's house was bought by giving two checks of 10,000 each to Mr. Dr. Ramaswamy in my daughter's name. <laughs> Obviously, you've been instrumental in his horse racing career. Clearly, you were with him and he bought his first horse. And you've, he's come a long way from there and you've come a long way from there as well. At this juncture where, you know, when he gives his horses to other trainers, does it bother you? No, it does not bother me at all. Because uh, as, far, as far as my bread and butter is concerned, he's giving me my bread and butter. I'm, I'm not a greedy person, I'm a satisfied person. I, I, I value his friendship more than whatever he gives me. Whatever I ask for, whichever horses I select, he buys for me. So I'm not bothered. Time now for a quick break here on The Winning Post. We'll continue that conversation on the other side of this break. When we return, we'll find out more about Manya Jadhav's professional life. Thank you for staying with us here on The Winning Post. Let's continue the conversation we were having with our racing pro for this weekend, MK Jadhav, a trainer to the stars like Feroz Khan, Mukri and Mahmood. Like we were discussing earlier and I'm still reeling from it but you've been here for 43 years so you're you know an established member of the old guard or the old way of training and schooling and today there's a new crop of trainers do you see a lot of difference yes of course there's a lot of difference so uh, when I came I was the youngest trainer when I came and when I joined uh, RWITC in 70 and uh, now I'm one of the senior most in fact only S.A. Shah is uh, six months senior to me as far as uh, license is concerned. Training methods have changed, uh, modernization has taken place, more scientific methods have come in. Yes, we have to change with times. Um, but still, the, as, uh, as we've seen in life, the old, uh, old methods still hold good. No matter where you go, what you study, um, experience is experience. Because every horse is a different horse and uh, your experience only counts and that, that's how you gauge the horse and uh, assess him and train him there, uh, from there onwards. Which has been the most special horse that you've trained? It's difficult to say but um, I think Thumbelina. She was uh, a changing point in my career and uh, Vijay's career also. That was the first uh, big, horse which, uh, big horse which Vijay bought because uh, the rest of the time we were breeding from our own mares which we had and those were small mares and uh, ordinary breeding so we had uh, Vijay had only one or two horses at a time uh, racing then uh, once uh, Vijay thought we will we should venture into buying something from outside and Thambalina was the first one which we bought 
I, if I'm not wrong, I think I bought her for something like two lakhs and ten thousand or something like that. Night of Medina was doing well, and uh, the breeding seemed good. Uh, grand uh, maternal sire was Grey Gaston, so we bought her. She's a tough-looking thing, and uh, she's done wonders for us as far as the guineas was concerned. Uh, we were the first people to lodge a case against the club and win it against the uh, HFL laboratory. Uh, we were in touch with a uh, lot of people abroad. Vijay, I think, must have spent more money uh, in his telephonic and um, fax, uh, fax messages than the stake money which we earned from that. Uh, he, he, if not for him, I, do, I don't think I would have won that case. He's won the case more than anyone else and uh, he was very hurt that uh, people thought that we had took the horse to win because uh, he was a small owner and I was a small trainer and there were rumours going on that they'll do anything to win a race. That sort of thing which he wanted to wipe out. And uh, a person like that standing behind you, only one question he asked me, have you given this drug to the horse? And I said no. From then, then onwards he went on and fought the case. And we won it. How did that incident change you from there on? Did you become more wary and less trusting of other people? No, I have always trusted my staff and uh, they have stood stood by me. And uh, except for one case where I had given an analgene injection which came positive, I have not come positive for any other horse. So I trust my people fully. My security is quite good. And uh, unless you have a black... Uh, egg in your basket, then only you can get into trouble. Otherwise, uh, most of my men are very good and trustworthy. And I've got very strict uh, restrictions about owners walking into the stables on race days and all that. And my Jamadar and my assistant imply that. So I'm quite safe. What does your normal day, uh, you know, pan out like? It's been the same routine, I'm guessing, year after year. And also, what kind of a stable do you run? Do you run a very tight shape? Are you very hands-on? My life starts at about 4 o'clock in the morning. Uh, especially in Pune in summer, we get up very early and 5 o'clock we are on the, at, the, at the race course. And the routine goes on. After finishing work, we go to the stables, finish our dressing and all these about horses, see what treatments have to be given or uh, fill out our log books and everything. By the time we finish off, it's nearly 11.30-12. Go home, have a quick lunch and need a nap in the afternoon, two hours of nap. And then back again at 4.30 to the stables in the evening. And most of the time in Pune, it's quite relaxed because uh, Pune is, uh, you know, most of the owners are from Bombay. They don't come regularly every day to Pune. Only on the weekends, uh, race weekends, they are there. So we are a little busy on the Saturdays, Sundays. but. Uh, Normally, the week is okay. And uh, fortunately for me, I have my stables in my house in Pune. It's the old uh, camp area where every house had a stable. So I've got about 17 stables in my uh, house. So it's quite easy. But Bombay is quite tough because uh, most of the owners, after they finish their office, they go home, have a wash, and then they want to come and see the horses at the stables. So we have to wait for them. Obviously, they are doing it for the pleasure. And we have to sit here sometimes till 7.30, 7, 7.30. And then we go home, usual early dinner and off to bed. As far as you're concerned personally, between Bombay and Pune, I get the impression that you prefer being in Pune. Do you also just get to, you know, maybe spend more time with your family? Is it just more easy on the mind? And do you feel that affects your training performance as well? Actually, uh, when my, my children were small, that time it did make a difference that I wish to stay with them in Pune and uh, my wife had to stay there with them for their studies and everything and they would just come here the weekends uh, so that time I used to feel like staying in Pune but as such I prefer Bombay to train my horses Pune is a the race course is very small and short straight and I prefer training more of staying horses and Bombay is a better track for tra as a training st staying horses on that note, we're going to slip into another very short break, but when we return, we'll bring you face to face with Manya Jadhav, the family man. Welcome back to the Winning Post, powered by Akash Global Advertising in association with the Serum Institute of India. 
Now, Man Singh Jadhav, our racing pro for this weekend, began his career when he joined his father 43 years ago. Time has come for him to pass the baton and the mantle on to his son, who will become the third generation racehorse trainer, a profession that can take a heavy toll on family life, as MK Jadhav explains. So when do you get time to really unwind and what do you do when you do? Uh, unwinding for me uh, <laughs> is, uh, what to tell you, uh, it's very difficult. Uh, it's only when my daughter went abroad for studies that I first time I've taken a holiday. In uh, somewhere around 91, 92, I went to Kashmir for a few days with my wife and my two apprentices who were there. and. Uh, <laughs> After that, I don't think I've gone on a holiday because uh, my wife and children don't want to take me on holiday because all the time I'm thinking about horses and I get phone calls from the stables about something happening and the moment any horse or someone falls sick, I leave the holiday and I rush back home. So they don't want to take me on holiday. And how many children do you have? You mentioned your daughter and I saw your son inside. Uh, I have only two children. Uh, daughter is 38 and son is 28. Uh, 10 years apart. He's an architect, but he has uh, served for four years in a company and now he's decided to join me, so he's become an assistant from last year. Are you happy about that or do you, would you prefer that he took the other way? No, I'm not happy about it. Neither is my wife happy about it. Uh, we, we both try to convince him that racing is not the same and uh, there are a lot of problems now. Owners are not the same and uh, I'm very lucky to have owners like uh, Mr. Vijay Shirke and my friend, school friend Daraya Sarafat and Iqbal Nathani and so many others who have supported me all throughout my life. I have never had problems of uh, owners moving out of my stable and going away to someone else. I've had a steady flow of horses all the time. Of course, the last few years have been very, very good. I, have, uh, I used to have an average of about 20 to th 25 to 30 horses the year round and now I have got about averaging about 50 horses a year, which is a step up. But all these same owners are getting old like me, they are my, my age, and whether they'll be there to support him when he starts his license. It's very difficult for everyone to start trusting him the way they trust me. As far as your son is concerned, I mean, I can understand your concern. Today, racing as a sport is not as popular as it used to be. It's become more niche. It's even fewer people and as far as the government is concerned it's not really doing its bit to popularize the sport is it if anything all these taxes and extra issues that are cropping up would only deter owners definitely uh, i think the as a, as a racing body the club or what we have the jockey club of england and all that like that our um, race clubs in india should get together and do something about this there is no representation going to the government from all over the country uh, I remember when I was a kid, that time Morarji Desai had banned racing and uh, most of the mares and uh, mares which we had, beautiful mares which the Maharajas had got in from England and Ireland had to go back, uh, they had to be exported again and uh, at that time um, I think doc, uh, Dr. Farukwadia's father uh, and some group of people, breeders and everyone got together and went to Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru and got the thing done back again. Convince them that racing is a sport and it has to continue in, in India. That way, I don't see anybody in, uh, in the racing uh, industry. Uh, there's no unity amongst the race clubs and that's how racing is suffering. Because each state has got its own rules, each state has got its own taxes and they're killing the race. your wife and her contribution I mean obviously she's also a very patient person and you know it can't be easy on any relationship to have a career like this where your holidays are very few and far between where your routine is so uh, you know strict how does she cope with all of this she has come from a very ordinary background her father was a party worker in the communist party she had nothing to do with racing at all she uh, took a long time getting uh, accustomed to all these things uh, she picked up a lot of racing, in fact uh, came to a state where uh, we started a stud farm of our own, small stud farm uh, in our house, in the compound. 
I had one stallion and six mares, and she was looking after the uh, whole stud farm. She's got a lot of knowledge now of racing. She's owned many horses. She has been an owner for many years. We were in partnership with uh, Iqbal Nathani. I had at one time 11 horses in partnership and many brood mares. In fact, uh, our horse bred by us, Republic, finished short, uh, half a length second in the Indian Derby. But at the same time, she's looked after my children. Uh, she's been the backbone of the whole family. Uh, she's the one who has kept me straight in racing because her condition was that I will only take money which is coming the straight way. Any other money which you bring, I will not enjoy it. Wow, that's truly incredible. What a beautiful story, really. I'd love to meet her, that's for sure. As far as your dad is concerned, you know, you speak so fondly of him. You've learned what you had to from your father. You were at that stage where you're going to be passing down that knowledge to your son. So what are some of those traditional, you know, things that have stayed with you from what he taught you? Basically, training of horses, as far as training of horses is concerned, is... Uh, uh, I have another, uh, another assistant who is a senior to my uh, uh, son. He's been here with me for 14 years now. Jude, uh, he's very good. He's very good. He's supporting me now. I'm getting old. Both of us combined together and uh, we've done an excellent job, I think, as far as we are concerned. We've, done, we've been very successful in uh, combining the old with the new. Uh, basically, I feel that the, um, the base of the two-year-old when he comes into our yard has to be very strong. Until and unless that base is there, the foundation is built, I don't go ahead. We've got a lot of patience. Patience is the name of the game. And the uh, main thing is that the owners should have patience. Nowadays, new owners buy very costly horses and they want returns very fast, which is not possible. And that's where they push their babies and they go wrong. And we find so many babies breaking down so easily. Like all over the world, people are breeding for speed. And they're not waiting for the horses to be developed enough to take that much strain as they want to. In the olden days, for instance, uh, we used to have the classics. I mean, the guineas and the derby and all were the main races. So people with good horses and good pedigree were waiting for those races to come. They used to give them enough time. But nowadays, we've got so many millions coming in that the babies are pushed when they are not even two-year-old complete. I mean, we are pushing our babies right from September. We're trying to get them ready for the first million race, which is run in October which I think is very, very unfair to the horse. That's how the state has become. So racing has changed a lot. You know, you've been here for 43 years. There have been many instances in your life till now, whether it was when you were in engineering college or between Ireland and India, many forks in your life and you've chosen one way or the other way. Any regrets? Not at all. Not at all. I don't know. If I would have been an engineer, if I would have been very qualified, maybe I would have got a job with Shirke company. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> One way or the other, you would have been stuck with Vijay Shirke. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Thank you so much for speaking to us. Thank you so much for giving us your time. And all of you out there, whether you've heard it or not, the fact of the matter is that there are no shortcuts in life. Patience is a key. There's no compromise for being straight, being straightforward, being honest, because in the long run, that's really what the true treasures are. Thank you very much for staying with us. That's it for this episode and believe you me, had time permitted, there were lots of more interesting stories and anecdotes that Mr. Jadav had to share. But we will not let him off. We will go to Pune to his house and film with him as he has promised. That's all we have time for. Thank you for watching. If you've missed anything, remember you can catch it all on YouTube. That's www.youtube.com slash winningpostracing. Also, as far as the tips are concerned, do follow our resident expert at Mohit Lalwani on Twitter for all the tips. Till we see you next week, may the horse be with you.